Pastor Larry Moss of Living Word Church, and uh, we want to continue with the Word of God. Uh, I'm going to talk about something I've talked about before. It is so important. So again, I say to you, this is called the difference between conversion and consecration. You know, to be converted is to be uh, born again, except a man be converted. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So many people are believing this year, uh, 2022, uh, believing for a uh, great year. But you, you can believe God for a great year, but there's some things that we need to do to make it great. You can have a great, we can have a great day and a great year, but it's up to us because we've got to do the things that God is pleased with us doing in order to have a great year. You know, it don't come automatically your personal life. Do You don't have a great year just because you believe in God. Believing God is good. But on the other hand, we must believe, not only believe, but we must have consecration. Conversion and consecration. You know, um, this message really is for all of us. I'm talking to myself. This is for every child of God. If you're listening and, and watching on this broadcast, this message is for all of us. I don't have all the answers, but I do know the Word of God. And I don't know all the Word of God, but I thank God for what I do know. But I do know this. There's things that we've got to do in order to have a great year besides just believing God being born again. Uh, there's uh, some teachers out there right now that don't want to feed you the, the pure Word of God. Matter of fact, uh, someone in the UK have asked this question. And they said, what is a seeker-friendly church? What is it? And, 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 and this is what the individual says. Can anyone explain to me exactly what a seeker-friendly church is? I am a born-again Christian and have never heard of such a church over here in the UK, never heard of it. The moderator responded by saying, it is a new way to reach Christians and the unchurched and was started mostly by Southern Baptist pastors and has now infected the greater body of Christ. The major theme is not to offend people. Therefore, they can't talk about sin hell, repentance, the blood of Christ, etc. The church services are to entertain people and tell them how Christ can help them be better or like a self-motivation. It is one of the greatest threats through Christianity in the 21st century as a false doctrine. Why? Well, the seeker-sensitive movement is an evangelism of oneself. What do I need? What do I desire in order to make myself happy? Like it's all about me. Many of the groups interview unbelievers as to what they want in a service in order to be comfortable. Surprisingly, the infidels like to dance, sit in comfortable seats, view a big screen, and while they're viewing, uh, viewing a big screen, they're, they're eating breakfast or eating a meal during service. But they don't want to hear about Christ on the cross, the blood, or of salvation and what manner to grow in Him. The seeker-friendly movement is the most dangerous thing that has ever happened to the church because the movement is unscriptural and full of leaven. You won't have any problems knowing when this movement hit your church because it brings radical change in how you have church. Your church worship and preaching will change and no longer resemble what it once was when the anointing was there because it's now designed to make unbelievers comfortable in their sin and short 
your church will no longer look or run like a church, but a social club. And that kind of a church is all about me. In that church, I can be a better person. I, can't, I, I, I can feel good. What can God do for me? That's the attitude. But we're wrong. It is the other way around. It is what, it's not about me at all. It's all about God and, and what He wills. Our whole country needs to get off the self-centered kick that it has been on. Quit implying that truth is relative and that whatever works for you is the right way. People are perishing and they need to hear the truth. They need conviction about breaking God's commands. All of them. We need people to be repenting and changing. Changing. They need confrontation. Now, I do believe in times of the Word of God that we hear words that makes us feel good, that edifies us, encourages me, and all this is fine. But we do need to hear sermons and words of confrontation. Repent. Turn around. It goes on and says here, A secret friendly church is one that preaches that God is all love. Grace is all there is, no consequences. You'll never hear them talk about sin or repentance. They are trying to grow in numbers by appealing to people who want to live with one foot in, in the world and one foot in church, hoping they are saved. A secret friendly church is a church which waters down and avoids confrontational questions and are witnessing. Churches are growing in leaps and bounds because of this good feeling teachings. Definition of a seeker friendly church is this. Now they don't call it a seeker friendly church. It's a church that's trying just to please people. It's a church that uh, that I mean, want to preach what makes you feel good, it makes you happy. And, and there's sometimes I may not encourage you every service. I'll, I'll minister a lot of messages that will help you with your faith, encourage you, but there's times I will be honest with you because love is honest. But a secret friendly church is a place where you can go every Sunday and they tickle your ears, tell you exactly what your flesh wants to hear, and they take your money, slap you on the back, and usher you into hell. Just because you go to church, is no sign you're going to heaven. You go to church because you're a Christian. Going to church is good. Just because you tithe, there's no sign you're going to heaven. Tithing is good. We need to do these things. But a church, biblically, is a church that's supposed to teach you the truth of God's word. The Bible said, but be you doers of the word of God and not hearers only. When it talks about conversion, you must be born again. The Bible says, except a man be converted and become his little children, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But we, we'll be talking about conversion and also about consecration. Now, conversion is our greatest opportunity. One of my greatest opportunities in life is conversion, to hear about Jesus, and to be born again, to be saved. And consecration is your greatest challenge. To consecrate means to be devoted to a purpose as if with deep dedication. To be consecrated is to be totally committed and dedicated to God. To be consecrated is the action of making, of declaring sacred. To declare holy or, uh, or dedicate to a higher purpose. Something consecrated is dedicated to God and is sacred. To make a conscious will and decision to dedicate your soul, mind, heart, and body to God. This decision must be one of will, intelligence, and affections. 
Joshua said to his people there in Joshua, the third chapter, verse 5, Consecrate, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders for you. You know, consecration precedes the mighty workings of God. The difference between conversion and consecration. Conversion is God's will for every believer. The Bible says there in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 9, He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Consecration is God's will for every believer. Consecration simply means to, to, to set apart, come out from among them that's walking ungodly. Don't do the things they do. Don't live like them. Don't live like the world. Don't, don't go. If you don't drink, why go to the bars? Withdraw yourself from that. Are you listening to me? To be set apart. What is sad when people say they're Christians, but when you watch the lifestyle, they don't act like Christians. When you are converted, there's a change in your life. There should be a change in your life. Conversion is the moral duty of every sinner. Conversion. Everybody should be born again. It's God's will. Consecration is the moral duty of every believer. Conversion is coming to Jesus. Consecration is conforming to the image of Jesus. I want you to notice with me in Romans chapter 8 verse 29. For whom he did for new, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And what about conversion? If you have received, if you have truly received Jesus, if we are really, we say, Christians, then people must see a change in your walk, your talk, your attitude, your expressions, your responses, your lifestyle. Must be a change. Conversion makes the rebellious, sin-stained, hell-bound sinner a justified, blood-washed, heaven-bound child of God. In conversion, the old sinner becomes a righteous new creature in conversion. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's been converted. He is now a child of God. The Bible says to put off the old man, put on the new man. Be converted. Thank God for conversion. In conversion, your spirit is born again, made new, and is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. If you are a child of God, then the Spirit of God lives inside of you. Now, you look on the television or screen or whatever you're looking at, if you can see me, you, you really can't see me. You see the house that I live in, but you can't see me. Why? Because I'm a spirit being. I live in this body. God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well, if God made man, how did God make man? If I'm going to be in his image, how, how do I look? What do I look like? Who am I? What am I? In order to know who I am, I'm, I'm, I need to know what God is, who God is. Well, John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. Therefore, if God is a spirit, being, then I'm a spirit being. I'm not God, but I'm a spirit being. I'm created in His image. And my spirit, the real me, is housed in this temple, my body. No, you're not that your body is the temple, so I live, so you can't see me. So therefore, I'm a spirit being. If I step outside my body, I look just like me, 
but my body is natural, my spirit man is spiritual. The thing that needs to grow is your spiritual man inside of you, growing in God's Word, growing in the knowledge of the Word of God, and your mind, which is your will, your soul, your will, your intellect, must be developed in the Word of God. Now, in consecration, your spirit is born again, made new, and is dwelt by the Holy Spirit. God lives in your human spirit. And your human spirit is in your body, and your body becomes the temple of the Holy Ghost. The greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That's in conversion. But in consecration, you begin living out of your spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit instead of living out of your emotions, your ego, your hormones, uh, your intellect, or your flesh. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh is against the Spirit, the Spirit is against the flesh. They are contrary one to another, so you cannot do the things you will. So, don't be led by the flesh, by your feelings, by your emotions. Conversion is to be led by the Spirit of God who lives on the inside of you. Glory be to God. So conversion and consecration. In conversion, you receive a gift of eternal life with Jesus. In consecration, you receive an assignment to bear fruit for God. That's consecration. In conversion, you give Jesus your heart. In consecration, you give Jesus your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Conversion is free. I'm talking about the difference between conversion and consecration. Con conversion is, is, is free. won't cost you nothing. The price has already been paid. Jesus has already shed his blood. You can receive Jesus as Lord. Salvation is free. Now it costs money to get the salvation to you, especially on airwaves and television and radio and all of that. It costs money to pump it to you, but it's free. That's conversion. So conversion is free. But consecration, consecration will cost you everything you have. You know, in a war, there's, the Bible says in the last days there'll be rumors of wars. And lot, there's always been a lot of wars. Philippines, U.S., I mean, Vietnam, many wars. But in one particular war, war they had this motto all uh, about the, the army. All gave some and some gave all. All gave some and some gave all. As a child of God, all, we all give some. But some, that's the con consecrated ones, they give all. They give all. They set themselves apart. They give all. They consecrate themselves. In conversion, you pledge supreme allegiance to Jesus. Amen. In consecration, you invite your Lord Jesus to exhort His Lordship over every facet of your life. You can say, it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that lives in me. I'm not living just for myself. I'm living for him. I'm consecrated. In conversion, you lay aside your sin. In conversion, you lay aside your sin. You've been forgiven. You've been cleansed by the blood. But in consecration, consecration, you lay aside your will. Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, not my will, but thy will be done. The most important thing in your life is to be consecrated, that your will won't be done. You all, you do have desires in life. You have certain desires that you have and certain careers, that's fine. It's okay to have the desires. Matter of fact, the Bible says, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have them. That's good. The Bible said, delight thyself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of thine heart. 
But what, what kind of desires is he talking about? The desires that he has put in your word. The desires that he has put in your word. Amen. So therefore, always keep God number one. Put his desires in your heart. Amen. So in conversion, you lay aside your sin. In consecration, you lay aside your will. The cry of the converted person is, I'm saved. And the cry of a consecrated person is, I am not my own. See, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. In conversion, you drink the cup of salvation. Amen. In consecration, you drink the cup of obedience. Even when you first receive Jesus, do you realize there's things just, you don't just get to say, well, thank God I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Sit down and do nothing. No, you've been created after, after the image of God and God created you not only to be his son and daughter, but to serve, to serve him, to walk in obedience. To walk in obedience of what? To walk in obedience of the word of God. The Bible said, James 1, but be you doers of the word, not hearers only. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If I am willing and obedient, I will eat the blessings, enjoy the blessings that God has for me. So in conversion, you drink the cup of salvation. Then after salvation, in consecration, you drink the cup of obedience. When you are converted, you say, God, I need you. But when you're consecrated yourself, God says to you, I need you. We are partners now. See, we are co-partners with him. The thing that he does, will do for you, and the thing that you need to do. You need to do the word, he'll confirm the word. We do the word, he confirms the word. How do we do the word? We obey the word. He watches over his word to perform it. So there is conversion. There is consecration. You know, uh, a man many years ago, Smith Wigglesworth, was a great man of God. I think he rose 23 people from the dead. God might have used him supernaturally. And, and he was a plumber. Then he went into ministry. But you know what? He made this statement. What God requires is a yielded, consecrated, holy life. And he, will, he can make of such a flame of fire, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Conversion is a wonderful beginning. Remember the first time that you received Jesus as Lord? Remember that? You know, when I was a teenager, I went to church. But I didn't really confess to be a Christian. But I went to church. I don't know. I just went to church. And uh, it's amazing. I went to church, but I wasn't a Christian. Probably one reason why I went to church, because I, that during that time I couldn't drive. I, to go to church, I had to go with my parents, but I went to church. But even when I got me a, a, a vehicle, uh, I still went to church. I, I remember sitting on the, the second row. I mean, I'm sitting toward the front. And, and I love to hear the, uh, uh, the pastor of that church was uh, Bennett Richardson. He's in heaven now. They always called him preacher, you know, preacher back then. Well, that's, that's fine. You call me preacher, you call me pastor, call me Larry, just, just call me right names. I'll, I'll take anything. Just, just don't curse me. Just call me some good names. Amen. Amen. But I was sitting there and hearing the Word of God. I, I remember, and uh, he was such an anointed uh, man of God, and, and one day he gave the altar call, and I gave. I went to the altar that particular service, and I, and I gave my heart to Jesus, got born again. I mean, it was a wonderful beginning for me. I never forgot that. My heart changed. I got born again. So therefore, I got converted. Conver conversion is a wonderful beginning. 
but consecration takes you to the finish line. Between conversion and the end, there must be a consecration. Takes me to the finish line. That's what we need to learn the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Set yourself apart to begin to hear the Word of God. And that way you can fight the good fight of faith. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7, Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept my course. I have kept the faith. First Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now, back in those days, I went to a church that, man, we believe in shouting. I mean, the Holy Spirit gets to move him. We just believed in shouting. We sh- now, we didn't have much word. He preached very messages. I'm not being uh, critical of his messages, but there wasn't much word being preached. But he preached a lot of things that moved you emotionally and stuff like that. And, but we did believe. I mean, God did move, and we shouted and just run and get excited, you know. And, and, and we shouted because we, we felt something. We felt a goosebump. <laughs> we felt the anointing. We just get excited and, and just praise God. But now I don't throw that out. I still believe in shouting. But I don't, we don't shout now here at Livingwood Church. We don't shout because we feel something. Thank God for a feeling. Sometimes you feel, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel, you feel like you say, you can't live by feelings, you live by faith. But now we don't, we, we don't shout because we feel something, we shout because we know something. What do we know? Do you have time for me to tell you what we know? Praise God, I'll tell you what I know. I know that I'm the righteousness of God, that He made me righteous. I know that He, he will never leave me nor forsake me. So, and conversion, since I know these things, learning about who we are in Christ, since we know about the authority in the name of Jesus, so many revelations of God's Word that we have learned, and that helps us to understand, helps us to understand that we can be consecrated and helps you to make it through the storms of life. Helps you make it through the storms of life. Count it all joy when you fall into divers, temptations, testings, and trials, knowing this, that the chain of your faith. So, therefore, not only are you converted, it's okay to be converted. You're a child of God, you're watching this, you're a Christian. But have you consecrated yourself? If you really want to see a change in your life, what do I mean by consecration? Spend time more in the Word. Spend more time in fasting and in prayer. Spend more time in His presence. Spend more time hearing the Word of God. Spend more time in your local church. Be there faithfully. That's how you consecrate yourself. Amen. But I want to thank you for tuning in and remind you, contact us. Let us know if these messages are blessing you. We love you. Remember, you cannot be defeated. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.